So getting into institutional lending. So you've said this many times uh, over the course of years that it's all collateralized lending. So, and then I remember in the AMA, you said, if you can prove to me that anybody else has gotten a special sweetheart deal where there is no collateralization, then I will give you X amount of dollars. And so far you haven't had to put that in. So I don't, I mean, that only makes sense, right? To collateralize. So if someone wants a thousand dollars worth of X, you have to give up $1,500 worth of blah to get this type of asset back. And then they can do whatever they want with it. That is essentially how it all works. So there should be no instance where there every, anything would ever come up short. That's what I, as I see it. Is that right? Uh, no, that's not right. Because uh, unless everybody gives you collateral uh, that is one-to-one, -one, meaning if somebody gave me Bitcoin and I lent them Bitcoin, then there's zero risk. But because normally the two assets are not matching, meaning if you borrowed Bitcoin and uh, you gave me dollars and Bitcoin doubled, uh, and you don't return it, uh, my community has exposure, right? So, it's, so there's definitely a risk of default if I cannot collect additional collateral as the value of these coins moves very quickly. So like if you look at the last two months where Bitcoin went up 50%, 60%, we had many margin calls to these institutions, right? And you would say, wait a second, these are f famous big institutions. Why would you margin call them? because their collateral was not sufficient to cover the loans they took, right? So we, we don't care that you are famous and you have, uh, you know, like your, your address is one Wall Street or whatever. We don't care about any of that stuff, right? All we care about is we have an agreement. You were supposed to give us 150% and now it's 120%. And you either return the coins or you give us more collateral, right? Those are kind of like the relationship, the way the relationship works. So the risk we're taking on behalf of the community is, that some of these institutions will not perform on their margin calls, right? And, and when you see a company blowing up or going out of, out of business, it's because they couldn't collect either the underlying or the additional collateral and basically the value of what they lent out uh, exceeded th what they had in assets and basically they, they have to file for Chapter 11 or something like that. So as I mentioned on, on my AMAs, on every AMA, I state if we have any uh, bad debt, if we have any uh, defaults, if we have any uncollected asset. And to, to date, we are, we've been in business now for three years, we haven't had any of such events, right? So so that goes back. I'm not saying there will be any. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure 100%, I can tell you right now, 100% certainty that there will be somebody that we lend to who will not pay us back. And, and that's why we committed to use our own balance sheet first to uh, pay back for any losses uh, before we go and tell our community, hey, we lost some money and so on. So, uh, and currently we have over $700 million worth of assets in our balance sheet. So, uh, you know, I, I laugh when I hear these people say, oh, I have insurance. Uh, Cred had insurance. They can, they're not going to collect a dime from the insurance, right? So, so all I'm saying to your viewers is that you have to understand that sometimes people use words that don't, don't really mean anything. And, and that you have to do your homework. And unless you have time to do your homework, uh, you shouldn't put your money uh, because you're putting it at risk. So we try to make it as, as clear and as simple as possible. But I agree with you. Sometimes these words and these sentences get to be too long and people look at this and say, I don't understand. And uh, either I'm not taking risk or I'm taking a little bit of risk. Uh, and and that's, that's where we end up. Right. So let's.